In this video, we are going to take a look at this excellent book. It is titled How to Read and Do Proofs, and it was written by Daniel Solo. This is a book that is intended for beginners. So if you are a person who wants to learn how to write proofs, this is probably one of the best books that you can get. Now, there are other really good proof writing books that I also recommend, but this one is is worth getting this one's a soft cover and it's well made and it's awesome the amount of clarity in this book is priceless so let's go through uh we're going to look at what this book covers we're going to take a, a little piece of mathematics from the book and read a little bit about proofs so you can decide uh what you think about this book um i think it's a great book this book was recommended to me by a former professor a very very long time ago and i've had it since then so this one is an X library book or EX library, meaning that it belonged to a library. So this was part of the Northbrook Public Library, it says. And you see there's uh, a summary of proof techniques. You have uh, the forward backward method, the contrapositive, contradiction, construction, choose, uh, speci specialization. So let's go ahead and go a little further. How to Read and Do Proofs, An Introduction to Mathematical Thought Processes. This is the fourth edition. And here are the contents. So there's a, a nice preface to the student, uh, a preface to the instructor, some acknowledgments. And then here are the individual chapters. I, I want to emphasize that this book is really fun to read, and it's very easy to read, which makes it a great book. The Truth of It All, The Forward-Backward Method, on definitions and mathematical terminology. And then we have quantifiers here. Let's turn the page so we can see what else we have. Here you can see some other, other topics and you have some examples of proofs from discrete math, linear algebra, modern algebra, and real analysis. And you have some of the answers to some of the exercises. And let's skip the Ford for now. And then here's the, the preface. Um, let, let's read the preface. It's actually really, really good. And I think it might be uh, something that is interesting. So let's take a look at it. After finishing my undergraduate degree, I began to wonder why learning theoretical mathematics had been so difficult. As I progressed through my graduate work, I realized that mathematics possessed many of the aspects of a game, a game in which the rules had been partially concealed. Right, interesting, right? Partially concealed, he says. Imagine trying to play chess before you know how all of the pieces move. It is no wonder that so many students have had trouble with abstract mathematics. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting take. This book describes some of the rules by which the game of theoretical mathematics is played. It has been my experience that virtually anyone who is motivated and who has a knowledge of high school mathematics can learn these rules. Right, so you don't need any prereqs. The prereqs for this book are just motivation. Doing so greatly reduces the time and frustration involved in learning abstract mathematics. I hope this book serves that purpose for you. Now, you know, obviously you should have seen some math uh, before jumping into this, but, you know, the more math you have, the better, right? But it's not like you have to know calculus before reading this book or anything like that. And there's a preface to the instructor. And let's jump into the content. So there's an introduction here. It talks about the objectives of the book. Um... And let's go here. Let's go here to what is proof. Let's take a look at what Daniel has to say about um, what is a proof. This is really interesting. It says here, in mathematics, a statement is a sentence that is either true or false. Some examples follow. Two different lines in a plane are either parallel or intersect at exactly one point. One is equal to zero. 3x equals 5 and y equals 1. x is not greater than zero. There is an angle T such that the cosine of T is equal to T. That's called a fixed point, by the way. Uh, observe that statement one is always true. Two is always false. And statements three and four are neither true or false uh, because depending on the value of the variable. For this reason, three and four are called conditional statements. It is perhaps not obvious that statement five is always true. It is true. It therefore becomes necessary to have some method for proving such statements are true. You can actually approximate that value, by the way, using Newton's method from calculus. Kind of, kind of a random, <laughs> kind of a random thought, 
random statement. In other words, a proof is a convincing argument expressed in the language of mathematics. In this and other books, proofs are given for what seem to be obviously true statements. One reason for doing so is to provide examples that are easy to follow so that you can develop techniques for proving more difficult statements. Another reason is that some apparently obvious statements are in fact false. You will know that a statement is true only when you have proved it to be true, right? So this is key. And then here's, here's where it gets really interesting. So I'm going to take the, take the time to read this because this affects a lot of people who are studying mathematics. A proof should contain enough mathematical details to be convincing to the person to whom the proof is addressed. A proof of statement 5 that is meant to convince a mathematics professor might consist of nothing more than figure 1.1, right? So here, here this is, uh, you can see, cosine t is equal to t, right? Because you can just basically draw the graph of cosine, you can draw the graph of, you know, um, y equals t, and you can see they intersect. So there is a value of t uh, such that cosine of t is equal to t, right? So pretty, pretty clear. Whereas a proof directed toward a high school student, okay, would require more details perhaps even the definition of cosine. Your proof should contain enough details to be convincing to someone else at your own mathematical level, for example, a classmate. It is the lack of sufficient detail that often makes a proof difficult to read and understand. One objective of this book is to teach you to decipher condensed proofs that are likely to appear in textbooks and other mathematical literature, right? You know, if you pick up a copy of like Rudin's Principles of Mathematical Analysis, you'll notice that he just starts with like, let epsilon be greater than zero, choose delta to be the minimum of these three crazy quantities, let's go. And he never explains where things come from. So you have to be able to decipher those things basically. Given two statements, uh, A and B, each of which may either be true or false, a fundamental problem of interest in mathematics is to show that the following statement called an implication is true. If A is true, then B is true. And yeah, that's a, a very typical uh, thing that you prove in mathematics. And to prove that, you basically assume A is true, and then you follow a series of steps, and you show B is true. He, he explains everything in this book, um, just really to the core. And this is the kind of stuff that you need to know if you are going to be proving things, right? So uh, if you already know how to write proofs, I, I don't know if you're going to get an incredible amount of value from this book, but I still think it's worth reading. It's a very easy read if you already know, um, you know, quite a bit of mathematics and you know how to write some proofs. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of refreshing. Look what it says here. It talks about some exercises. It says, let's read this together. Solutions to exercises marked with a B are in the back of the book. Solutions to exercise marked with a W are located on the World Wide Web at, and then they have a <laughs> World Wide Web. Yeah, this is old, right? It's an older book. Uh, which of the following are mathematical statements? So you have some statements here. So it's just different types of questions that you can answer. And then here he talks about the forward backward method. This is chapter two. Okay. And it gives you a method there that you can look through. Then you have some exercises and then uh, on definitions and mathematical terminology. Let's take a look at this. A definition in mathematics is an agreement, he says, by all parties concerned as to the meaning of a particular term. You have already come across a definition in chapter one. There, the statement A implies B was defined and hence agreed to be true in all cases except when A is true and B is false. Nothing says that you must accept this definition as being correct. If you choose not to, then we'll be unable to communicate regarding this particular idea. Yeah, it says they're not made randomly, they're motivated. You know, every definition is a, uh, is an if and only if statement. Uh, that's a, oh, here, here, here he, I think he talks about that here. Uh, observe that the words if and only if are used in some of the definitions, but often if is used instead of if and only if. Some terms such as set and point are left undefined. One could possibly try to define a set as a collection of objects, but to do so is impractical because the concept of an object is too vague, and one would then be led to ask for the definition of an object, and so on and so on. Such philosophical issues are beyond the scope of this book. Right. Um, you can get into some things like that that just really, I mean, personally, they're not that, you know, critical for progressing in mathematics. 
Here it talks about using definitions and proofs. Yeah. So, so it's not necessary to say if and only if here. Like here it says definition 5. An integer n is even if and only if the remainder on dividing by n uh, by n 2 is 0. Or an integer n is odd if and only if n equals 2k plus 1 for some integer k. You can just say if. And it's implied that it's an if and only if statement. Okay. So you don't have to put if and only if in definitions. That's, that's the point. And then, again, this is intended for absolute beginners, okay, for absolute beginners. So when I look at this book, I mean, I, I think it's great, but it is, you know, there's some, there's some basic stuff here. So I gotta get a bit of whiff here. Ah, quantifiers, three, specialization. Yeah, it talks about for all. So you can see it's a pretty good book. And let's, let's look at the answers in the back so you can see. It's got some references, by the way, and it has an index. And there's a glossary here of mathematical symbols. And here's a glossary, which is very good. The glossary of, of math terms and symbols is, is very good. And here you can see some solutions um, to, to selected exercises, right? And, and you, do get, you do get full solutions, right, to some of the exercises, not all. So it's a great book. Um, I think it's good to have more than one proof book. I have other uh, proof books. I have like quite a few because I collect uh, math and science books and other um, things. But this is one that I think is worth having. Again, I've had it for a long time um, and you can learn from it. Let's look at some of the proofs in the back here. Uh, examples from groups. Here we go. What's this? Proposition 36, if G is a group and A is in G, then for all integers M and N, we have this, this here, the uh, properties of exponents. So it's analysis of proofs. So it looks like they're gonna use uh, induction. This is a, a proof here by induction. And they go through, they do, do, you do cases. So it looks like they did if M plus N is greater than or equal to zero, and then if M plus N is less than zero, so he does two cases. Yeah. And then there's some other stuff, some other proofs. So it goes through very carefully um, and, and gives proofs. Here's one. If T is the set of all S and R such that S is positive and S squared is greater than two, uh, X is a real number and X squared is less than two and N is a positive integer with that, then uh, x plus 1 over n is a lower bound for t. So it's a quite, a quite an interesting statement there, okay? And then it goes through and it gives you a full proof of, of that statement and analyzes everything very carefully. Obviously, when you're, when you're reading this book, by the way, like, you don't want to just, like, okay, so, like, here's a good example. Like, take this problem here. Um, you, you don't want to just read the, the proof and go through it. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you, you want to sit down with, with a piece of paper like I have here and a pencil, and you want to try to work it out on your own before actually, you know, reading the book. Because one of the things that is really tough about proofs, and this is unfortunate, and it's also good, I guess, is, is that you do, have to, you do have to struggle and you do have to think in order to learn. So it's not like it's painless. Learning is not painless. It's not effortless. You can't just say like, oh... I'm going to hook up a wire to my brain and just absorb all the information in this book. That would be great, but the truth is that it doesn't stick with you if you don't really think about it. So if you're just reading the book and looking at the answers, um, it, it's not going to help you. And it's good to have the answers in the back of the book so you can check your work. But when you're just learning, it's very, very important to make the effort and take the time to um, try to solve every problem by yourself. Oh, this is really cool. We were just talking about fixed points. Look, a real number x is a fixed point of a function, uh, f from r to r, if and only if, f of x equals x. Uh, and then here's a proposition. If you have a function from r to r, with the property that there's a real number alpha between zero and one, such that uh, this is true, and this is a fixed point of f, then this is a unique fixed point of x. Okay, interesting. And then here's, here's the proof. Nice, right? So uh, we saw that earlier with cosine, right? We saw that 
cosine of t is equal to t, right? So this, this is a, a, a fixed point. So t is a fixed point of, of cosine, right? We saw that uh, earlier in the video. And the way to, one way to, to approximate the value of that is basically you, you set it equal to zero, and I'm just gonna call it G. And then you apply Newton's method to approximate um, you know, the root, which is basically the point of intersection of these two graphs, which is the same thing as finding the root of this equation or zero of this function. So, yeah. Nice book, uh, very well made, good quality. Uh, this is published by Wiley, and I think there's a newer edition. I'll try to leave uh, like links in the description or something. Or So 2005, uh, John Wiley and Sons. I think there might be a newer edition. There might be a hardcover. This one's pretty good, though. It's, it's, I've had, again, I've had this for a very, very long time. It's a good source of exercises, too. So, like, one thing you can do is when you're learning to write proofs, a lot of the proofs in this book are easy. Like, they're simple proofs. So, you can go through and, like, you can just try to do as many of the examples as you can and as many of the exercises as you can. And a lot of times, even if you don't have the answer to the exercise, you'll know it's correct, right? Because you'll know how to write proofs, you know what I mean? So yeah, kind of a fun book. Um, I like it, I recommend it, and I just wanted to make this video to show you the book. Uh, if you wanna subscribe, go for it. Uh, it always helps to have more subs. I have another channel, The Internet Sorcerer, where I post random stuff. I have math courses. Uh, my math courses are on Udemy, which is a reputable place to have courses, but if you get them, please use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com. I've got courses on algebra, calculus, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, um, lots of proofs in some of the advanced courses, and the proofs are all 100% correct. And I, I think they're, they're, they're decent. They're good proofs. I try to show a lot of details, um, the amount of details that you would need to show if you were in a class. Kind of like Daniel talks about at the beginning, Solo mentions that, you know, you should, you should have, let's just go back to that because that was really key. You should have as many details, here it is, a proof should contain enough mathematical details, okay, to be convincing to the person to whom the proof is addressed. So uh, usually when I make videos, I, I pretend that I'm a student in a class and so that when you're reading those proofs, that's how much detail you should include. I try to include as many details as I can uh, when, I, when I make proof videos. So Because proofs are hard, right? And without the details, there's plenty of books with proofs that are lacking details. So the last thing I wanna do is um, <laughs> make a video with proofs with, with lacking details, right? So hopefully it helps people. Anyways, uh, rambling, great book. I recommend it. I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing mathematics.